Ready for the world's hardest riddles that will activate your brain? Can you solve them all without mistake? Now, Foggy is a friendly ghost living in the attic of an old house. Every night, he goes for a refreshing walk around the house for four hours. Foggy doesn't like one month of the year, because that month, he gets to walk around way less than the previous months. What's the month and why? It's February. There are just 28 days and nights in February, and 29 on the luckiest years. So fewer nights and less time for Foggy to walk around. Just a month ago, Autumn and her family moved into a new house. Everyone loved it, but Autumn was sure that the house was haunted. She doesn't know it yet, but our old friend Foggy is the ghost that lives in her attic. He is a friendly ghost, so once he left her a message written on a mirror. Autumn woke up and saw this. Can you help her read the message? It's a code. Autumn should ignore the numbers and only look at the letters. The note says, do not be afraid. I am foggy. And who are you? Right before Halloween, when everyone was dressed up and carefree, all the creatures flooded a little town trying to blend in. Detective Callum was on duty to identify all the imposters and keep an eye on them. He has a couple of leads, and your task is to help him find all the monsters. Deal? The first one we need to find is a vampire. The vampire lives in one of these two houses. Can you tell which one? Look, there is garlic hanging in this house. Vampires can't stand garlic, they prefer cilantro, so it cannot be a vampire's house. So the vampire lives in this one. Perfect, let's move on. One of these houses belongs to a centaur. Do you have any idea which one? Hmm, it must be this one. Pay closer attention to the path to the house. There are footprints of horse hooves. Centaurs have an upper body of a human, but a lower body of a horse, which explains the prints. The centaurs must be living here. The next one we need to track is a mummy. Take a closer look at these two apartments. Where does the mummy reside? Now, did you notice the bandages all over the room here? It must belong to the mummy, so I bet that's his place. Now it's time to track the Cyclops. Keep your eye out and make your best guess. Did you notice this strange object in this room? It looks like a pair of glasses, but it only has one lens. Well, that's because it belongs to a Cyclops. They only have one eye. So that must be his place. Okay, we only have one last creature to identify, a gnome. Here are two apartments. Which one does the gnome live in? Did you notice that the mirror in this apartment hangs a bit too low? That's because gnomes are short. He must be living here. Other creatures that have flooded the town are robots. For Halloween, some people started to dress up like them, too. Look at these three people. Can you find the fake robot? Look at their footprints. The robot on the left has human footprints in the beginning that only later change into tire patterns. He must be the fake robot. Let's train your eyes a bit. Here are Halloween emojis. All of them but one has a pair. 
Can you find the one that doesn't have a pair? Great job! Here it is! Okay, one more time. Now there are even more emojis. Do you see the unique one? Here it is! Good! Now let's proceed. A month before Halloween, Daphne moved into a new modern house that was built in the early 2000s. It was a great house, but Daphne got it for a very low price because it was believed to be haunted. The girl didn't believe in that, so it didn't bother her one bit. On Halloween night, she returned home after midnight. When she walked into her room, she saw a ghost floating there. The ghost looked at Daphne and said, You know what? You can't live here. It's my house. I've lived here for a hundred years, and you're making me uncomfortable. <laughs> Daphne said that the ghost was lying. Why? The house was built in the early 2000s, so it's barely 20 years old. The ghost couldn't have lived there for a hundred years. That's right, ghosts lie. It is Halloween night, full moon, all the creepy things, but Eslin went to an abandoned spooky house in the woods alone. As soon as she walked in, the door behind her got shut and locked. She wandered around the house and found three doors leading out, but they didn't seem safe. Behind the first door, there was a werewolf. Behind the second door, there was a zombie. Behind the third door, there was a ghost. Which way is safer for her to choose? Eslin should definitely choose the third door. Ghosts may be spooky, but they can't do her any real harm. Of course, Eslin wasn't the only one who went to the house that night. Another student, Colton, dressed in the silver armor of a knight, decided to explore the spooky house too. Just like with Eslin, the door got shut behind him right after he stepped into the house. He found three ways out too. Behind the first door, there was a vampire. Behind the second door, there was a huge dragon who hates strangers. Behind the third door, there was a huge cyclops that would crash anyone who walks in. Which way should Colton choose to stay safe? Luckily for him, he is dressed as a knight in silver armor. Vampires are afraid of silver, so the first way is totally safe for Colton. On Halloween night, Kennedy wanted to spend the evening with her boyfriend, but her dad was against her dating anyone. To go around it, she lied that she was going to trick-or-treat with her friends and promised to be home by midnight. She returned at 11.30 p.m. Yet her dad got mad at her and demanded to tell him where she really was. Wow. How did he understand that Kennedy didn't go trick-or-treating? She returned with an empty candy basket. Outside of town, hidden in the woods, there is a house where a group of friends live. A mummy, a mermaid, a ghost, a werewolf, and a witch. Every Halloween, they eat candy. There are five creatures, but this year they only have four chocolate bars, and they don't know how to split them equally. Maybe you have an idea? They should split each one of the four bars into five pieces, and then each creature gets a piece from each bar. This way, everyone will eat exactly four pieces of chocolate. Now that monsters and humans live next to each other, let's try to identify who is who. I will be showing you photos, and your task is to find a monster in each photo. Here's the first one. Can you find the monster? (laughs) 
Look, this guy's skin is green. He's definitely not a human. Here is the next photo for you. Be attentive. Do you see someone who is not a human here? This girl in the swimming pool is a mermaid. <laughs> Good job! Okay, here's one more. It's quite hard, but I believe in you. Who do you think is not a human here? Look, this woman doesn't cast a shadow. Now this is not normal for a human being, so she must be some other creature. Great job! Here's another one for you. Which one do you bet isn't a human? This person is carrying a wand. She must be a witch. This is probably the hardest one. You have to keep your eyes wide open. A photo of a local cafe. Do you see something suspicious? Look, there's a glass of blood in the air, as if someone's drinking it. It must be the vampire who's drinking it. But the vampire isn't in the photo because they can't be photographed. Ugh, technicalities. Take a look at two friends, Ariana and Brooke. Can you tell which one of them is richer? It must be Ariana. Look, she has an original Louis Vuitton purse. Cameron and Dean went fishing on a lake in the middle of winter. Here are photos of them. Cameron is posing with just a little bit of clothing when it's freezing cold. And Dean is posing with a big fish he caught. Which one of them is less smart? It's Dean. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking. It's dangerous to stay there. Everly and Jasmine are in a hurry to get to work. They're running late. Everly is going her usual way, and Jasmine has taken a shortcut. Which one of them is in danger? Jasmine, look, she's walking close to some buildings. There are icicles hanging there. It's very dangerous to walk under them. Noelle and Nash are walking outside. Which one of them is in danger? It's Noelle. Even though Nash is blind, he has a stick and he'll know that there is a hole. Noelle might not notice this because she's too focused on her phone. For her wedding anniversary, Charlotte received a diamond necklace. Next evening, she was having dinner with her friends and showed the necklace to them. She let them look at it and left for the bathroom. When she returned, the necklace wasn't there. Her oh, friends no. told her that she had taken it with her. Take a look at the pictures before and after and tell where the necklace is. Look at the glass of juice of this woman. Seems like there's more juice in the second picture, but it's not true. She just put the diamond necklace in the glass and the juice level rose. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch agreed on one condition. <laughs> there were three cards. Two of them said stay and one of them stated free. They were facing down and Esme didn't know which one was where. If she picked the free one, she would go home. Otherwise, she'd have to stay with the witch. There was a hint. One stay card wasn't in the middle. The second stay card wasn't next to the other one. Which one should Esme pick? If one stay isn't in the middle, it's either on the left or on the right. Otherwise, if the other one can't be next to it, then it's definitely not in the middle, but on the other side. 
So, Esme should pick the middle card. It must be the free pass. Ava needed to sneak into her mom's computer to delete an email she had accidentally forwarded to her, but the account required a password she didn't know. Uh -oh. Luckily, there was a hint, and here's what it said. What do you think the password is? The second number is the number you get if you multiply the digits the first one consists of. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 8 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20. Similarly, 4 times 9 is 36. And 7 times 8 is 56. So, the password must be 3656. Gianna owns a factory producing cars. Three workers can assemble three cars in three days. How many cars can one worker assemble in one day? If three workers assemble three cars in three days, then one worker assembles one car in three days. So, in one day, a worker assembles one-third of a car. Eloise woke up in a dark dungeon with only some torches lighting it up. There was a door, but it was locked. There was a panel with buttons of different colors and a plate with the word GROW written on it. How can Eloise get out? The word is the hint, and the letter it consists of are the first letters of the colors of the buttons Eloise has to press, in respective order. Which are green for G, red for R, orange for O, and white for W. Miel likes everything to be in perfect order. Her room is very organized, and even her collection of numbered marbles is sorted into three boxes. In the first box, there are marbles with numbers 1, 2, and 7. In the second box, there are marbles numbered 1, 4, and 5. Two marbles in the last box have numbers 6 and 3 on them. What's the number on the last marble in the last box? The sum of numbers on marbles in each box is 10. So the number on the last marble should be 1. Ashley arrived on a remote Greek island to spend her getaway vacation alone. All the locals there tell the truth and all the tourists always lie. Two girls approached her and one of them said, Hey, I'm Paige. I'm a tourist here. And this is Sophia. She's from here. Can you tell if either of the girls is a local or a tourist? Since locals always tell the truth, a local would never call themselves a tourist. So, Paige must be a tourist, which means that she's lying about Sophia being a local. So, Sophia is a tourist too. Tomas was washing a window on the 24th floor of a large office building, and suddenly, he heard someone screaming. The guy looked outside and saw a lady falling from the 30th floor. But in five minutes, the woman was standing on the ground, totally unharmed. How did she survive? Take a closer look at the sky. Yes, it's Superman. He saved the lady. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? Watermelons don't grow on palms. Twin brothers Stan and Ken had been working hard. They wanted to collect money for their mother's anniversary. Unfortunately, they didn't manage to save enough to buy her the car of her dreams. The brothers were very upset and agreed to go shopping the next day and pick another gift. At night, Ken couldn't fall asleep because he got a genius idea. While his twin was sleeping, Ken secretly took all their savings and headed to a casino. It was his lucky night. He tripled the sum. In the morning, Ken put all the money back in the box and fell asleep. Stan woke up, opened the box, and immediately realized that Ken had touched their savings. He didn't even need to count the money to understand that. How did Stan figure it out?
In the box, there were large and small bills in the evening, but now there are only large ones. Kelly was traveling and discovered a beautiful abandoned castle. She entered the building and went downstairs. She was taking pictures when someone locked her inside the basement. Kelly looked around and saw three tunnels leading to freedom. In the first tunnel, a huge hungry monster was waiting for her. The second tunnel was full of snakes. And the third tunnel was filled with sleeping gas. In five minutes, Kelly was outside the castle, running to the nearest police station. How did she escape? She used her headband as a mask and ran away through the third door. Look at these animals attentively. What's wrong with this picture? This little guy on the left is listening to music. Two sisters went on a hike. Each of them took a box of matches. Nellie put her matches in a bag together with toothpaste and Shelly decided to store her matches in a bag with nail polish. While the sisters were walking through the forest, they accidentally fell into a huge puddle. When they got out of it, Shelly suggested making a fire to dry their clothes and cook something to eat. Both sisters took out their matches. Unfortunately, Nellie's matches were covered in toothpaste and Shelly's were in nail polish. Both girls left the matches to dry in the sun and left to collect some firewood. It started raining and all the matches got soaked. But 10 minutes later, the sisters still managed to make a fire and toast some marshmallows. Whose matches did they use? They used Shelly's matches. The nail polish dried and made them waterproof. If you don't keep it, it'll break. What is it? It's a promise. Susan was asked to describe her sons. She said, they're all redheads but three, all blondes but three, all brunettes but three, and all pink haired but three. How many sons did Susan have? The answer is four. One redhead, one pink haired, one brunette, and one blonde. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to herself, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who had been around Lisa. The stylist said she had applied Lisa's makeup and, indeed, hadn't seen her eating anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said she had been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. Look at the pictures. Which of these people is a risk taker? The girl is risking less. She's sitting on the second floor and there's a pool below. The guy is risking more. The building he's sitting on is taller. You can see clouds and planes in the sky. What food can you never cheer up? A blueberry, because it's always blue. Ha ha, okay, let's move on. There are five lemons in a bowl. You take away three of them. How many lemons do you have now? Well, you have the three lemons you took. King Gerald has a very beautiful daughter named Teresa. Four princes from different countries came to the kingdom, hoping to marry the girl. But the king decided to check how smart they were and organized a special contest. Teresa was in the center of a 200 by 200 foot room, and the princes were standing on small boxes in each corner of the room. 
the first prince to touch Teresa's hand would become her husband. But they weren't allowed to leave their places or use anything but their hands or wits. One of the princes figured out what to do immediately. He married the princess. What did he do? He just asked Teresa to come over and touched her hand. You can easily find me on Earth, Mars, Mercury, and even Jupiter, but you'll never find me on the Moon, Venus, or Pluto. What am I? I'm the letter R. Manager George received an anonymous text message. It said a robber had just entered the supermarket where he worked. George hurried into the hall and saw four pregnant women in the grocery section. The man looked at the ladies attentively, detected the thief, and called the police. How did he know? The woman on the right is the only one who doesn't have a shopping basket or cart. She's putting groceries inside her fake belly. Imagine that you're in a room with no windows and no doors. How can you get out? Eh, just stop imagining the room. Mrs. Victoria decided to give her grandson Rick an unusual gift for his 18th birthday. She called him into her room, showed the guy her safe, and handed him a corked bottle with a key inside. Honey, this is the key to my safe. You can keep all the money you find there if you manage to open it, but you must take the key out without removing the cork or breaking the bottle. Good luck. Rick accepted the challenge and started thinking about the puzzle. What would you do to get the key out? Push the cork into the bottle, and you'll easily get the key. Look at the picture. What's wrong here? The lady's reflection is holding the bag in the wrong hand. Amy had a crush on her neighbor. She went to the local witch, Sally, to ask for her help. Sally said she would make a purple love potion. On the night of the full moon, Sally took a sheet of paper with her granny's love potion recipe. She mixed all the ingredients except for the last one. Suddenly, a gust of wind threw the recipe into the fireplace. Sally was desperate. She didn't remember the name of the last ingredient, but she still knew for sure that the potion should be purple. Help Sally finish her work. She should add the blue ingredient. When you mix blue and red, they make purple. Harry and three other video bloggers traveled to a creepy canyon. They wanted to make a video about this mysterious place. They had been filming all day long. In the evening, they gathered around the fire, but it started to rain and everyone went to sleep in their tents. In the morning, Harry woke up, left his tent, and headed to the big bag with food to grab something for breakfast. That's when he discovered that all the food was gone. Harry got angry. He woke everyone up and interrogated the members of his team. Fred said he'd been looking at the starry sky all night. Jane said she'd been trying to catch a Wi-Fi signal to have a video chat with her boyfriend. And Sam said he'd been sleeping. Who is lying? It's Fred. It was raining at night and he couldn't see any stars through the clouds. Two students, Betty and Sarah, went for a walk after a very stressful test. They bought some coffee and candies and began to look for a picturesque spot for a picnic in the park. But suddenly, a guy in a mask grabbed Betty's bag and ran away. Sarah and Betty followed him. At one point, they saw a blind man sitting on a bench. He was wearing glasses and had a cane. The girls asked him if he'd seen a person in a mask carrying a female bag. But the man said he couldn't have seen anyone because he was blind. Sarah got very embarrassed, handed him a candy, and thanked him for his help. Then the girl took Betty aside and whispered that the blind man was the robber. They needed to call the police. 
Betty was very surprised. Why did Sarah decide the man was the robber? If the man was indeed blind, he wouldn't have seen the candy. Will's mother has three sons, Fred, Peter, and... Will. It's Will's mother, after all. Two mothers and two daughters spent all day shopping, but they only bought six dresses. This was enough for each of them to have two dresses. How is that possible? Only three people went shopping. A mother, her daughter, and her daughter's daughter. One of them is a daughter and a mother at the same time. And each of the three purchased two new dresses. Rachel had been dreaming of becoming a famous actress. Finally, her dream was about to come true. A famed talent agency had invited Rachel for an interview. She arrived at the office to meet her new agent early in the morning. There were four people in the conference room. Can you tell which one is Rachel's agent? This guy is the only person who doesn't have an employee badge, so he's probably a guest. This man is wearing a classy expensive suit, but he brought coffee for everyone, so he's an assistant. This lady's mug says, world's best lawyer, so she's probably responsible for legal issues. And this relaxed lady over there is Rachel's agent, Zoe. Zoe offered Rachel to take a seat. Which place should Rachel choose? This chair is missing one leg. Someone has spilled coffee on this chair. The barista has written the boss on the drink in this cup and left it on the table next to this chair. And someone has left a sweater on this chair. So, Rachel has only one option. And here it is. First of all, Zoe decided to check how smart Rachel was and offered her this puzzle. She used three pencils to make this triangle. Rachel's task was to create a perfect square by moving just one pencil. Can you help her? Here's the answer. After the meeting, Zoe unboxed a delivery from a popular Yay! writer. He sent Zoe his new masterpiece in secret. Zoe didn't say anything about this to her colleagues, but one of them was actually trying to steal the script. Can you guess who this person is? It's the assistant. He's using his front camera to take pictures of the mirrored ceiling while Zoe is looking through the script. Zoe brought Rachel to her first audition. Rachel joined other actresses in a line. They were all competing for the lead role in a new series. The main character had poor eyesight, so all actresses put on fake glasses to get into character. Rachel didn't do well enough, and another actress, Sally, got the job. Rachel was very upset. But suddenly, Sally fell to the floor. She was unconscious, and Rachel called an ambulance. Doctors said that someone had poisoned Sally. But all the actresses ate the same snacks and drank the same water. Doctors checked the food, and it was fine. Can you guess what happened there? This actress gave Sally a wet wipe to clean her glasses. The wipe was poisoned. The next day, Rachel arrived at a theater to meet Stan. He was a famous director. She noticed five weird things about this place right away. What about you? Can you see them too? Something's wrong with the gravity. In particular, with this chandelier that isn't hanging from the ceiling as it should. The wind that the fan creates is blowing to the right, but this actress's hair is flowing to the left. There are human footsteps on the ceiling. The spotlights are red, but the lighting on the stage is blue. And this ballerina's shadow is falling in the wrong direction. 
Stan introduced Rachel to his favorite actors, Josh, Steven, and Tyler. They were triplets that always joked around, but this time, they agreed that one of them would tell the truth, and the other two would lie. They told Rachel about their game. She had to guess their names. The first guy said that he was Josh. The second introduced himself as Steven, and the third guy said, the second person always tells the truth. Can you figure out who is who? If the third guy is telling the truth, then so is the second. But only one brother was supposed to be honest. So the third guy must be lying. This means the second brother is lying too. So then, the first guy must be telling the truth. He is Josh. The second guy is neither Josh nor Steven. He's Tyler. And the third brother is Steven. Stan offered Rachel to play a princess in his new production. Rachel went to the dressing room to apply makeup. Suddenly, she heard a scream. Rachel ran out of the room and saw the main star of the play on the stage covered in paint. Rachel questioned the suspects. Ron, an assistant, claimed that he'd been eating his sandwich on the balcony when it happened. Lily, a stylist, was on the phone with her husband. And Stacy, a cleaner, said she'd been cleaning the bathroom at that moment. Who's guilty? Ron, he's holding a sandwich, and it's still unwrapped. Now that Rachel got a job, she needed a place to stay in Hollywood. She started looking for an apartment and went to three agencies. Each agency showed her one apartment. Rachel liked them all, but when she examined the apartments, she realized that there were scammers among the realtors. Rachel looked at the documents attentively. Which apartment should she choose? Rachel chose the third option. The first apartment is on the sixth floor, but that's impossible because the building only has five floors. And according to the description of the second apartment, its construction will be finished in 2025. This is 2022, by the way. But Rachel needs an apartment immediately. Rachel rented the third apartment and moved in right away. But something was wrong with the bathroom there. Can you see it? How is she supposed to flush? Can you see anything weird here? There's no shower drain. Rachel heard the doorbell ring. Her neighbors, Peter and Victor, brought her two cakes, but only one of them was edible. Can you tell which one? Victor's cake is sprinkled with almond flakes, while Peter's cake is decorated with human nails. The next day, Zoe texted Rachel to check how she was doing. Rachel sent her this selfie and said, alone at home, learning my lines. Zoe sent Rachel this reply, what a liar you are, why? If Rachel's alone, who's that guy? Zoe took Rachel to a party and introduced her to Nick, an eccentric billionaire who was financing one of Zoe's movie projects. They had a brief conversation, and then Rachel lost him in the crowd. In a while, Rachel noticed three guys facing away from her. Each of them looked exactly like Nick. Can you tell who the real Nick is? This guy has a tattoo on his hand, while Nick didn't have it. And this guy's suit is fake. They wrote the brand name with a mistake. Nick offered for Rachel to sing karaoke. The girl sang a song, and Nick liked it so much that he offered her a suitcase full of gold. But he wouldn't reward just anyone. Only smart people deserved his money. To get the gold, Rachel had to crack a riddle. Nick showed her four rare coins. He said there was something wrong with three of them. Can you figure out which coin is real?
people who lived at that time didn't call their era BCE. This coin is from the future. Take a look at the date. There weren't cars in 1365. So here's the only real coin. Rachel used an app to call a taxi to take her precious suitcase home. She saw three identical cars in the parking lot. Each of the three drivers claimed that Rachel had ordered their car. Which driver should Rachel choose? The third one. Take a look at the first taxi. There's a creepy guy hiding in the back seat. And the second car is missing a wheel. Zoe was having a party at her villa. She noticed that her son, Harry, was eating in his room with some lady. But Zoe didn't know who she was. The woman got very curious. So after they left, she sneaked into her son's room to find some hints. There were three girls at her party, Lily, Jennifer, and Diana. Zoe immediately guessed who was with her son. What about you? Harry is dating Jennifer. Look at the dishes on the table. There's a lipstick stain on the fork. Jennifer is the only girl wearing red lipstick. In the morning, Rachel went for a run in the park. On her way there, she met this woman. And a minute later, she saw another woman, absolutely the same. Rachel thought it was extremely bizarre. But in reality, there were five differences between these two ladies. Can you see them? Here they are. Rachel continued her run and saw these two guys on a boat in the river. And a couple of minutes later, she noticed these fishermen. Can you spot any differences? There are five differences between these two pictures. Have you found them all? Rachel stopped because she needed to tie her shoelaces. Suddenly, she saw these two women with backpacks. Uh -oh. Can you spot five differences between them? Right, here they are. Rachel arrived at her apartment building and found her neighbor, Peter, unconscious at the bottom of the stairs. The scene in front of her eyes was oh, so no. awful that Rachel fainted and the concierge carried her home. In the evening, after her nap, Rachel left her apartment. And guess what? In the lobby, she came across Peter again. But this time, he was energetic and happy. He was also drinking some juice. How did he survive? Look, he's a vampire! In the morning, Zoe called Rachel and asked her to come to the agency immediately. When Rachel saw oh, no. the office, she was shocked. It was a mess. Someone had stained the walls with paint, and broken furniture and torn documents were everywhere. Zoe questioned three suspects. Dan, an assistant, said that he'd been partying all night. Many people could confirm that. Jessica, a lawyer, said, Who do you think I am? I love my job. Otherwise, I would have already quit. And Sarah, a copywriter, said that she'd been the last one to leave the office. And she had locked the door, that's for sure. Who's lying? Jessica, all the mugs are broken, except for hers, world's best lawyer. The woman wanted to get rid of some documents, so she faked a robbery. It's a cold night, dark city streets, Lights of driving cars, sounds of sirens, loud voices, chilly air, wet asphalt. Are you ready to get rid of the crime in this city? Then remember to count your correct answers. November 4th, 2021. It's been raining for three days, but even this is not enough to wash away all the dirt of the city. For several hours, Detective Sadfist had been sitting in his car near the house of a Hollywood star. The detective is sure that someone is going to rob her house. The actress doesn't believe in this. In the distance, he sees a tall man in a hat. He approaches the door and knocks. 
The actress opens the door and greets the stranger. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was my house, he says. It has a very similar design. The actress closes the door and the stranger leaves. The detective gets out of the car and arrests him because the man is a thief. Why is the detective so sure about this? If the stranger had really thought it was his house, he wouldn't have knocked on the door. He'd have tried to open it with a key. The detective takes the thief to the station. The rain is finally over. It promises to be a long night, so the detective goes to buy a coffee. At this moment, the radio reports an arson to the south of the central square. No time for coffee. Sadfist hits the gas pedal and drives to the place. He notices the flames from afar. Two houses are burning. The detective notices several more police cars. A police officer tells him that one house belongs to a rich businessman. There's a lot of money inside. The owner of the second house is a poor artist. His paintings are burning now. Which house will the detective go to first to put out the fire? He's not a firefighter, so he won't approach either house. After watching the flames for a while, Detective Sadfist gets into his car and realizes he can't take it anymore. He needs some sleep. He doesn't want to go home because his house reminds him of her and he doesn't need those memories at the moment. He decides to rent a hotel room. The detective asks the hotel administrator to wake him up at 7 a.m. Of course, the man says, but don't forget to call me first, then I'll come to wake you up. One call will be enough. What does the detective need to do to make the lazy guy wake him up? he can set an auto call for 6.50 a.m. The detective enters the room and falls on the bed. At this moment, the door starts opening slowly. The faces of people he has thrown into jail appear out of the darkness. The detective sits up on the bed and the door slams shut. At first, Sadfist doesn't understand what just happened, but then he lets out a sigh of relief. It was just a nightmare. How has he figured it out? It's already light outside. It was dark when the detective checked into the hotel. That means he was asleep. A new day, a new case. The detective is going to the countryside. A girl has disappeared there. Sadfist intends to find her. He stops his car near three houses. They're located on the ocean beach. Three roads lead to the houses. Sharp rocks and shards of glass cover the first road. The second road is swarming with snakes. Lava is boiling on the third road. Which path should the detective choose? The ocean will soon cool the lava and turn it into stone. The detective follows the third path. He enters the house and finds the missing girl there. She confesses that she stayed late at a party and her mother was so worried that she called the police. Detective Sadfist arrives at an office building in the center of the city. He goes up to the top floor. Here, a rich banker is lying unconscious. Someone hit him on the head and stole important documents from his safe. There's a tape recorder on the banker's desk. The detective turns it on. The banker's voice comes from the microphone. My nephew. He called me a few minutes ago and said he would break into my office and take my documents. I don't know what to do. If something happens to me, you should know. My nephew Michael is to blame. Oh no, I think I heard the elevator doors open. I think it's him. He's here! The recording ends. We must find his nephew, one of the police officers says. I don't think so. The nephew has done nothing wrong. The man just wanted to frame him. Sad fist answers. How did the detective figure that out? Someone rewound the tape in the recorder to the very beginning. It's unlikely that the nephew did it. He'd get rid of the recorder. 
The detective leaves the office, gets into the elevator, and meets an old concierge. They go down very slowly. The concierge looks attentively at the buttons. The detective asks him what's the matter. The concierge answers that five people live on the 35th floor, three live on the 20th floor, four people live on the 7th floor, and seven people live on all other floors. The building has 40 floors in total. The concierge asks, which elevator button is pressed most often? What do you think? The answer is the first floor button. It's pressed by every resident. The detective gets into the car and drives to a cafe. He hasn't eaten anything since yesterday. He orders an omelet and opens a newspaper. There's a riddle on the front page. In the winter, a guy went to a nearby village to meet with his friends. He knew he needed to go through a forest, a small field, then a forest again, and only after that would he reach his goal. The guy started his journey. He went through the forest, the field, another forest. But then, he saw a big river. How can he cross it? The detective grins because he knows the answer. And what about you? It was winter. The river was frozen. A waiter approaches Sad Fist and puts his omelet with coffee on the table. The detective eats, then calmly gets up from the table and heads to the kitchen. There, he meets a masked robber. The detective arrests him. How did he know there was a criminal in the kitchen? Rob in Kitchen was written on the coffee mug. The robber is detained by other police officers and Sad Fist goes back to his car. He has a new case. He arrives at an antique store. Some swindler has deceived the store owner and sold him a fake coin. The coin has a date on it. 175 BCE. It looks old. The analysis has shown that the coin is ancient. The store owner says he thought it was really made before the current era. How did he eventually understand the coin was a fake? People who lived before our era couldn't write BCE on their coins. Sadfist leaves the store. Oh no, his shoes are torn. The detective gets into his car and goes to a shoe store. He parks, gets out of his car, and he sees three stores. The best shoes in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best shoes in the world is written on the second building. But the inscription on the third store is the best. Detective Sadfist smiles and goes there. What's written on the third store? The best shoes on the street. After doing some shopping, Sadfist drives down the street and sees a group of suspicious people standing next to a building under construction. The detective stops the car. People notice him and run away in the other direction. The detective runs after them. It seems they've managed to escape, but Sadfist doesn't think so. He calls for backup and tells the police he's caught a gang of hooligans. They're all hiding in a transformer box. How did the detective know that? After all, he lost sight of the hooligans at some point. The hooligans ran on uncured concrete and left footprints leading to the transformer box. Oh no! Now, Sadfist's new shoes are stained with wet concrete. The detective gets into the car and goes to the laundry. There, he meets the owner who finds out about another crime. The owner claims that someone has taken a huge amount of money from his safe. But the detective realizes that there was no thief. The owner stole the money himself to get compensation from the insurance company. Sadfist has noticed this laundry gets robbed too often, but the owner hasn't changed the locks or strengthened security yet. But how can the detective prove the money hasn't been stolen? There are banknotes in that washing machine over there. That's where the owner hid the money.
Tired, the detective returns home. His apartment is a mess. Since she left him, the house has turned into a dump. A mouse squeaks somewhere in the room. Inspect the apartment and help Sadfist catch the rodent. See that box with a hole? It looks like the mouse has chewed through it. Sadfist catches the tiny animal, but does nothing to it. He decides it will be his pet. The detective's mood is as bad as it always is. But maybe checking your score will cheer him up. 0 to 3 points Detective Sadfist has only gotten sadder because you haven't helped him much in his investigation. 4 to 7 points Not bad for an ordinary private detective, but it's unsatisfactory for Sadfist, the best detective in the city. Next time, try to be more attentive. 8 to 10 points Well, it's better, but still not good enough. It's like having eaten a burger and still feeling a little hungry. 11 to 14 points. Today, the city can sleep peacefully. You've helped the detective in almost all cases. He deserves his long-awaited rest. And you do too.